how to get around New York City using the New York City subway. Hi, I'm Megan, a licensed New York City tour guide, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the New York City subway. It can be a little confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's usually the easiest, the fastest, and the cheapest way to get around the five boroughs. Chill out, people in the comments. I know you're gonna tell me that walking is the cheapest and the helicopter is the fastest. But in general, the subway is the preferred mode of transportation of the eight and a half million people living in New York City. So stay tuned, make sure that you hit subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute. And let's get ready to ride the New York City subway. Love and talks, bringing healing to those who need a most. The reason why New Yorkers love to ride the subway is that for $2.75, you can get anywhere in the five boroughs. You really can't beat that price. Yes, I know you can walk, but the subway is much faster than walking and much more efficient. Also, using the subway, you don't get stuck in New York City's most famous landmark, which is traffic. You can spend hours sitting in traffic. It can take you longer to go like five blocks while you're waiting in traffic than it can to walk from the tip of Man the northern tip of Manhattan to the southern tip of Manhattan. So New Yorkers love to ride the subway. True New Yorkers know that it is usually the fastest, the easiest, and the cheapest way to get around. So now we're gonna learn how to use the subway. The first thing you need to know is how to buy a subway ticket. So if you wanna buy a subway ticket, you're gonna to wanna to find one of these kiosks in the subway station. Now it can be a little daunting when you look at it. You can pay with a credit card, an ATM card, and uh, not this one, but there are a lot of ones that you can pay in cash. But today I'm paying with a card, so this will be fine. You'll see that there is a touch screen. You're going to hit start. I'm gonna choose English because that's the language that I speak. Now you get this option where you can refill a card, get card info, or get a new card. The refill a card is if you already have a card. Right now, we're buying our cards brand new. So I'm gonna go to get new card. You're gonna notice there is a $1 fee that applies. Now you can choose a regular Metro card or an unlimited ride. Usually I want tourists who are visiting to get an unlimited ride because that way you can ride the train as often as you want. And I would say just get the seven day unlimited ride. For $33 a person, there is no limit. You can hop on and off the train as often as you like. So you would select seven day and then you select your method of payment and then you would dip your credit card. Now right now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna teach you how to get a regular Metro card if you're gonna do pay as you go. So you click regular Metro card and then it gives you some like prepaid amounts or you can select an amount of your choice with other amounts. Right now I'm gonna select the, the lowest amount of the prepaid amount which is $5.50. It says how would you like to pay? credit card and then I'm going to dip my credit card. So when they say dip, it is typically a pretty fast thing. Uh, I'm gonna hide my zip code so you don't see where I live. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All right, and then it says I will be charged $6.50. That's because there's that extra dollar because I'm buying a brand new Metro card. I click OK. It says processing payment. And then when it's processed, it's gonna pop out right here. And I am a card-carrying New Yorker. Here we are standing in front of a subway map. It shows you all of our subway lines. It kind of looks like someone threw spaghetti at the wall. Um, but we're going to make sense of that. And you'll also see how the subways cover all five of our boroughs here in New York City. You have the Bronx. You have Queens, you have Brooklyn, you have Manhattan, that's probably where you're gonna spend most of your time if you're visiting from out of town. And then you have Staten Island. Staten Island, it kind of cheats. You have to take the Staten Island Ferry to get there. It's absolutely free. Watch my video on the Staten Island Ferry to learn how to do that. Now, when you're looking at this map, one of the first things that I want you to know is whether or not you are going north or in New York speak, that is uptown, 
or south in New York speak that is downtown. If you know whether or not you're going uptown or downtown, that's really going to help you. One of the, the keys, like a secret, a New York City secret, is as you go north or you go uptown, the street numbers actually get higher. So if you're on the numbered street, for example, you're on 42nd Street, then you go to 50th Street, 59th Street, 66th Street. As they're going higher, you're going uptown. And as they get lower, like if you started at the northern end of Manhattan, 215th Street, 207th Street, like, man, that's a name street. Um, 191st, 181st, the street numbers are getting lower, so you are going downtown. And this is going to help you find the train that you need if you know whether or not you're going uptown or downtown. When you look at this map, you're going to notice that there's a whole bunch of different colors. It's the first thing that I usually notice. And I'm like, oh, do I want the red train or the green train or the yellow train or the purple train, which is my favorite color. The colors are great, they're really pretty, but they're actually not that helpful while you're trying to navigate. When you're trying to navigate, what's more important is the name of the train. So our trains are named with letters or numbers. So for example, we have the A train, the B train, we have the M, the R train. When you're trying to find a destination, make sure you know exactly what letter train you need or exactly what number train you need because they all go different ways, even if they're the same color. So for example, this red train right here, it runs almost the same in Midtown, but when you get up to 96th Street, you'll notice that the one train, which is red, is gonna take you all the way up into the Bronx, through Washington Heights into the Bronx. Then if you go back to 96th Street and you follow this, the two and the three train branch out. And look, the three train ends here in Harlem, and then the two train branches way out and takes you to a totally different area of the Bronx. If you're trying to find, for example, the Bronx Zoo and you take the one train, you're probably gonna end up very sad. Or if you take the three train, you're probably gonna end up very sad. So you wanna make sure that you have the exact number train that you want. Similarly, if you're taking the blue train, let's look at the blue train down here. The E, which is blue, ends at World Trade Center. That's exactly where we're filming this right here. Then you'll notice that the A and the C, they branch out here. And then if you follow this around, this can, is where it gets kind of really important. One of these trains takes you to JFK Airport and the other train takes you to Far Rockaway Beach. So if you take the, the wrong train, um, and, and you'll see that these are actually both A's, but one of them goes to Ozone Park, Lefferts Boulevard, and one of them goes to Far Rockaway. Make sure you get on the right train. So that's really important. Make sure you know the exact letter or the exact number of the train. When you are figuring out where to go on the subway, you have to be really careful that you know exactly the stop that you want and the train that you want. Because to make the subway even more confusing, a lot of our stops actually have the same name. So for example, we have 59th Street right there, Columbus Circle. At that 59th Street, you get the A, the B, the C, the D, or the one. But then if you go way down here, in Brooklyn, we have another 59th Street. That's where the N and the R are. So if you were like, oh, I'm looking for 59th Street, and you see that the N and the R go to 59th Street, you're gonna end up like in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, instead of at Columbus Circle about to go on a walk through Central Park. So you have to be really, really precise with that. And I'm gonna tell you about some apps that will help you be really precise with that. My favorite apps for riding the subway are my MTA, Transit, and Underway. I personally find Underway to be the easiest to use, and I love that it gives me train arrival times and a really great map of the subway. I'm now going to teach you how to swipe your subway card like a pro. So your subway card's gonna have two sides. There's like the pretty yellow side, and then there's the white side that gives you subway emergency instructions. Sometimes there's actually like fun patterns, but, but right now we have the typical yellow and white side. And you'll notice the yellow side has this black strip. So when you're going to swipe, you want the yellow side of the card to be facing you, and you want the black strip to be down. That's what this like reader thing is going to read. So yellow side towards you, black stripe down, and we're then going to do a nice swipe. I, 
I've been swiping for like years and I still always get a little nervous. You wanna make sure that you don't go too slow. If you go too slow, you're gonna get a, like you can't enter. If you go too fast, you're gonna get a, you can't enter. But right now we're gonna do a moderate swipe and then it's gonna say paid. And I'm in the subway, woohoo! I'm gonna show you another maybe easier way to enter the subway than swiping your card. In May 2019, the MTA started to install these uh, tap to pay or touch to pay uh, features in all of the subway stations. So today you can use your smartphone if you like, click on Apple Pay, for example, uh, and you get it ready, you see this little screen? You tap it, oh my goodness, and then I can go. It's so easy, I love it. The one downside is you can't get like a monthly pass or a week pass, it is pay as you go, but I almost always have my phone in my hand. So it's really easy to click, to pay, it's fast in and out, and you don't have to deal with any of those like swiping problems. So yay MTA, technology. Pro tip, whether or not you're paying using your phone or a card, do not just like chill out here. This is not the place to check your tax or to figure out, like open up your subway card or anything. People are going to get angry at you because you are blocking the entrance. You do not want that. You want your, your phone to be ready to go, get the payment ready, uh, enter this and you're just like, woo, I'm in. Have your card out. Don't be like fumbling through your bag. Have your card ready, swipe and be in. And then New Yorkers are going to love you because you're going to be experiencing New York like a local. One of the really cool things that I love about the New York City subway system is that it's always, well, it's 2021 right now, and in 2021, it's always $2.75 to ride the subway. This means that you could go literally anywhere in the five boroughs of New York City for $2.75. We don't have zones like a lot of other cities. They'll have zones where like if you're traveling a couple of blocks, it's one price, and if you're traveling further, it's another price, and even further, it's another price. Not the case. Always $2.75 for a single ride on the subway. This also means that when you are exiting the subway, you don't need your card. You don't need to swipe your card again. So after you swipe your card, you go through those turnstiles, put your card away, put it in a nice safe space. Um, I have noticed if you put it by like a magnet, so like if your purse, for example, has a magnet to close it, sometimes that can deactivate the stripe. So you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna fold your card, then your card won't work. Make sure that your card is nice and stored perhaps in a wallet, but put it away because you don't need it to exit the station. $2.75 gets you anywhere in the five boroughs. It's awesome. This is a very different looking subway map. I don't see a lot of subway maps that look like this um, in our subway system, but it's a cool map. And I wanted to point out that when you swipe your card, that $2.75 also allows you to transfer. So you can transfer um, to any train as long as it's in the same station. So for example, here at Times Square 42nd Street, you have a lot of trains that you can that you can get to. So you can get to the A, the C, the E, the N, the Q, the R, the W, the one, the two, the three, the seven, and also the S, the shuttle train um, from 42nd Street. And that $2.75 covers the transfer. So that's really cool. Um, another thing to just mention is when you look at this map, uh, the reason why kind of looks like it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like what was the one person thinking when they planned out this map? Um, it wasn't one person. <laughs> All of these lines used to be owned by different companies. So we'll talk more about that in another video about the history of the subway system and the MTA, but just wanted to point that out if you're looking at it going, hmm, this is really confusing, but we'll unconfuse it for you. We're going to head down to the 203 train here at Fulton Street, and I'm going to show you something about uptown and downtown. So as we walk down the staircase, you'll notice, you'll see uptown and downtown. Remember, you have to know which one you are going to. So the uptown will be on my right-hand side right here, and the downtown will be on your left-hand side. You want to make sure that you get the right one. If you're going downtown, you're going to want this train approaching right here. And then, if 
of you wanted uptown, you would ignore that train and you would wait over here underneath the uptown sign. So make sure you look on the platform for uptown and downtown. And sometimes you actually have to look for those signs above ground because not every platform is like this where both the uptown and the downtown train are on the same track. So make sure when you swipe your card that you find the uptown or the downtown train. A lot of people ask me, Megan, is the subway safe? Well, I've been riding the subway almost every day for the past 20 years and I'm still alive to tell the tale. We have a saying in New York City that says the later you go, the better the show. And mostly what that's referring to is street performers. You'll see some pretty crazy performers inside of the train. Um, but sometimes there are some more interesting characters as you go late at night. If that's the case and you're maybe feeling unsafe, I strongly suggest that you find the conductor's car. If you're trying to figure out how to find the conductor's car while you're waiting on the platform, I'm about to tell you. Some people like to be in the car of the subway that's next to the conductor. If you're traveling late at night, perhaps you want to be in the car with the conductor. It'll make you feel safer uh, and perhaps will possibly be safer. Um, and if you're trying to figure out what car the conductor is in, you want to look for this sign. It's this weird like zebra striped sign. And watch this. this. This train is pulling in. I'm waiting under the sign for the train to pull in. after everybody else has gotten off. And trust me, I know how much like every New Yorker has their favorite seat. If their favorite seat is open, they wanna run on the train and grab it, or if there's any seat at all, they wanna grab it. Um, but the few times when I have like pushed on, that's when I end up getting shoved or pushed or had unpleasant experiences and encounters with people on the train. So be polite, let people on the train before you get on. Another pro tip for you, if when the train cars pull in and it's really busy and all of the cars are really full but one, and you're like, oh my goodness, it's a totally empty car, the subway is fine. Um, there's usually a reason why that subway car is empty. Um, oftentimes it doesn't have air conditioning, so it can be like really hot, but more likely than not, there's probably a smell or something else in there that you don't want to be near. So if you see a packed train with one empty car, go to the packed cars on either side. Pro tip from a local, take my word for it. I hope this was useful for helping you learn how to use the subway. We learned how to buy subway tickets, how to swipe your card and your phone, how to navigate the subway, know about uptown, downtown, know your exact stop, don't pay attention to the colors of the trains, pay attention to the exact numbers of the trains. Uh, and we learned some useful pro tips from locals about like which car to get on and how to be polite on the subway. If you have any questions about how, the, how to use the subway, please comment below. I would love to know your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions for videos for me to make in the future, uh, comment below. Make sure that you hit subscribe so you never miss a New York City Minute. I have tons of videos. My goal is to help you have your very best New York City experience. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy your time in New York City.